Hey guys, welcome back to The Compound and to the first episode in the winter series. Uh, for the next four weeks, I'll be throwing down some icy decos on some Mattel dinosaurs. And the first dino on the list to get a chili repaint is the Mattel Ichthyo Venator. I hope I said that right. Probably did, probably didn't, who knows. So as far as color schemes for these repaints, I want to stick to uh, cooler colors that represent ice and snow, winter, chilly stuff like that, you know? Uh, so for this guy, I'll be sampling from a color palette similar to this one here, uh, just using the paints that I have on hand. Uh, as always, the paints I use uh, will be linked in the description box below if you plan on painting along. So with all of that said, Let's keep it cool and start slinging some paint. First off, I'm gonna mount him on my little holder here so it's easier to paint. So just a couple drops of hot glue on the bottom of the feet will be enough to hold him in place. Next up, I'm gonna give him a light coat of matte varnish all over. This will just be an extra step to ensure the paint has something to grab onto when I start to lay it down. First color to go down is this dark gray base, and with that down, I'm gonna start to build up my dry brushing colors. The first color we're going in with is Stonewall Gray. And this is pretty straightforward. Just get some paint on a dry brush and then wipe away most of it onto a paper towel and then lightly hit all of the raised areas. Next color to go down is dead white, and this is the same as the last step. Just lightly go around the figure and hit all of the raised spots. And you can see with just a little bit of dry brushing, it really starts to make the details in the sculpt pop. Now I wanna give some depth to the skin tone. So I'm gonna go in with some Kriotex white and I'm gonna mix it with a couple of drops of blue ink to make a very pale light blue color. And I'll very lightly apply a thin transparent coat over the tops of these areas that I dry brushed. And this will make a pale kind of ghostly blue gray skin tone. The last step will be to do a final highlight hit on all of the raised areas, and I'll be using dead white for that. And then I'll go back in with my airbrush with that original dark gray color that I used as the base, and I'm gonna tie the upper arm in to the hand, just kind of blend those colors together so they have a natural fade on them. Now I'll take some blue ink and glaze it over the sail sections to create a dark to light blue fade, kind of starting at the bottom of the sail and working my way up, getting lighter as I get to the top part of the sail. Uh, this will come into play later on when I do my final kind of uh, icy dry brush of white over the top parts of the sail. That's really gonna give it a, a kind of a chilly icy effect, which is essentially what I'm going for. Now I need to bring out some of the detail on the gray body parts. So I just took a little light gray and mixed it into the dark gray that I used as the base color to create a highlight color. And I'll dry brush that all over the gray sections to bring out all of that uh, nice detail in the sculpt and it will also add some depth to that skin. And with that done, I'm going to do my final dry brush highlight with the dead white and I'll go back over the very top sections of the sails. And this is just really going to give it that sort of icy fade from dark blue all the way up to kind of a snowy white top. Now to add a little rule of cool to the sail sections, I'm gonna grab some Turbo Dork white color shift paint and I'm gonna do a dry brush of that over the sail and you can see when the light hits it just right from different angles, kind of has like a blue hint, sort of like a teal, kind of greenish color, really kind of gives off sort of like a icy aquatic animal kind of vibe. It's a really cool effect that just adds a little extra character to the overall deco. So before I take this thing to the next level, uh, I just want to sort of hit all of the little detail sections like uh, painting the claws with black and then I'll touch up the teeth with some bone white and then gloss up the inside of the mouth with some gloss varnish. Like I didn't paint the mouth uh, because the, the factory plastic looked just fine and uh, the only reason I'm painting the teeth is because I did get some sort of dry brushing on the edges of the teeth. So I just want to clean those up real quick. Um, but other than that, aside from you know the little details, that's pretty much it for this guy. 
Now this thing looks good just like this. You know, I could stop here and I'm pretty happy with the way that it looks. Uh, but here at the compound, we like to try and take things to the next level. Uh, so I took my airbrush and added a gray fade line along the neck and the sides, kind of like the Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus has. And um, that is gonna be my guide for this next insanely difficult pattern I'm gonna do because I sort of, thought in my mind after looking at this you know sometimes that's how you know repaints go sometimes I'm doing something and then I get inspired you know almost towards the end I'm like oh that would look awesome on this so um, I think it's going to be worth it in the end um, because we're going to take this deco to the next level and we're going to give him sort of the Jurassic Park 3 inspired Spinosaurus design along the sides of his body. So I've got some white paint mixed with a little bit of that blue ink and it's thinned down in my wet palette. Now using a wet palette is key here to making sure that the paint is thin enough to flow onto the figure and it'll allow you to be able to draw nice sharp lines. And as a result, it will have a nice smooth finish. Uh, the best way to attack this is to just start with a line and then build off of that. Uh, this is a very difficult and time consuming thing to do. Uh, but if you just sort of focus on it and take your time, it can be done. It really just takes a little patience and just making sure your paint is the right consistency. That's why using a wet palette is important. It kind of takes the thinking out of it. But this took me honestly about two hours per side to do. And uh, I had to do about three coats on it to get a nice smooth finish. And the white paint is so thin and just painting a, a lighter color like white over a dark base can be very difficult. But after all that time, uh, this is the finished results and it looks so insanely cool. I was just gonna leave it like it was without the stripes cause that would have been easier. Uh, but I like to push myself sometimes and step out of my comfort zone and try something cool. Uh, but with all of that done, I can finally seal this bad boy up with some varnish to lock in all of that paint. And this frosty guy is ready to rock and roll. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and inspiring in some way, shape, or form. Uh, for any of you artists out there who like to draw, I'd love to see you guys take a crack at this deco and do a drawing of it. I think that would be seriously cool. Uh, if you either draw this or you do a repaint of it, remember to tag me over on Instagram at the Jurassic Park Compound so I can share it in my story because I love seeing the stuff that you guys can come up with. As always, if you need more Jurassic related content, you know where to find it. Links will be in the description box below. You guys stay warm and I'll see you around the compound.